Let's talk about the interpretive process, basic principles of interpretation. A dream that is not understood remains a mere occurrence. When understood, a dream becomes a life-changing experience. We need to know that symbols do not always mean the same thing from one dream to the next. We must learn that the general meaning of symbols, but always remain flexible as to their significance in a specific dream. And uh, we've got to avoid interpretive legalism. What is that? That's where I dream of um, a hot tub. And now every time I see a hot tub, it means the same thing. That's interpretive legalism. Okay, so a, so a symbol can mean different things from one dream to the next. It can mean a different thing from one dreamer to the next. Okay. We, we must uh, learn to reduce the dream to its simplest form. And that's a difficult task for new dreamers. I mean, uh, we all dream, and we've all, all we have all always dreamed. But when you become um, knowledgeable, understand. Wait a minute, my dream has significance. I mean, it's very difficult for you to reduce it down to the, the 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 main theme. Okay, you want it all. I want to know every symbol. I want to know every uh, detail in the dream. It all has a meaning. Well, that doesn't mean you should try to struggle to where you get the understanding of every part of it. The Bible teaches us to get it down in our simplest form. Okay? All I'm saying is, as new understanders of dreams, a big pothole is the struggle is, I want to know every single detail about my dream. I want to know what that cloud meant. I want to understand why was it a certain color and the car, why was the car uh, checkered versus another color and you and so you get you get you get overcome with the details in the dream and we lost the significance of really what was just the main dream about so we got to get cost of that reduce the dream to a simplest form ask the father <laughs> where am I in this dream determining this will tell us um, who the dream is about you know, are we an observer um, you know, we're not actually taking part in the dream. Uh, you know, I've had dreams sometimes when I'm in a, a um, um, like a, a stand at a football field and I'm watching events that are occurring on the, on the football field. Okay. Well, I'm an observer. God is just showing me things that are happening elsewhere that I do. He's given it to me for a reason, but it may not be all, uh, all about uh, myself it's about others so that's an important component when observing uh, it's usually from a slightly elevated position usually okay not always others in the dream are not aware of you being present if you're observing the dream is usually not about you but if you're observing yourself okay I've been in dreams where I've been in stands um, uh, bleachers, if you will, and I'm watching myself down on the floor. Okay, you're still observing, but the dream's still about you because you're watching yourself. Another, are you are, are we a participant in the dream? You're in the dream, um, but not the center of attention. You know, others are equally or more involved in the dream. Okay, it is similar to being one member of a group activity. Okay, another thing we need to recognize. Could it be that are you the main focus in the dream? Everything revolves around you and you're the principal actor. You know, if you took you out of the dream, really the dream wouldn't have any significance. Well, the dream is about you then. Okay. Occasionally you can shift positions in a dream from being an observer to a participant. We've got to determine what the focus is in the dream. And to find the focus, we ask ourselves, who is this dream about? Who or what is the center of attention in the dream? Okay, the focus is that element in the dream that if it was removed, the dream just falls apart. Okay, the dream has no more meaning if that if that person is out of the dream or that event or that situation is removed. If you're observing yourself, 
you can still be the focus. If you are observing, pay attention to the thing that, that you're observing. Okay, so that's the focus. So, what, so the focus is all about trying to determine what is this dream about? Is this a dream about me? Is this a dream about others? Maybe it's about our grandchildren, okay? We're looking for, so just because your grandchildren is in the dream doesn't mean the dream's about the grandchildren. Okay, you've got to look, what are they the focus or they are just members of the dream, okay? We've got to establish a sub-focus in our dreams. Sub-focuses are the elements of the dream that are necessary to find the theme of the dream or to find the plot and, and make it have meaning. Sub-focuses are, are important to rounding out or completing the story. They relate directly to the focus. There are usually two or four sub-focuses in a dream. To find the sub-focus, consider often um, consider when we remove the detail or remove the filler in the dream, the meaning uh, meanings will become clear. Okay, so that we're mentioning several things here about a dream. One, we can have a focus, right? We need to understand what is that focus? Is it us? All right. If if that if that is removed, if we remove, then perhaps and the dream fall apart. It's about us. Uh, is there other sub focuses? Is there other issues in the dream that God is talking to me about? Right. And, and so, are they actual participants in the dream, or are they just merely standing around? Okay. So we need to understand that. Then you're going to have details in a dream. A detail could be like, well, what's the color of the car I'm driving? Okay. The car could be the subfocus, but the color is the detail. I like to look at details as being like an adjective to a sentence. It just gives description. That's all. Okay. That's now that's me. That's just my personal opinion. I like to look at details as being an adjective. Okay? If you remove it, if you remove the color of the car, well, the car is still there. Okay. <coughs> the the color is just giving you a description of what the attitude is, or the of the of the dream or the of the item details refers to items in a dream that are not important to the coherence or the meaning of the dream if, if we remove the detail the dream would still stand and the understanding would still be known these elements are there to fill out the dream they can have little or no importance of their own okay so let's do a little quick exercise here there's a dream there and I want us to try to, as well, I'll read it, but I'll go ahead and take your pencil and let's just see if we can find uh, the, what a sub-focus or a focus is. Okay? As the dream began, I found myself standing at the edge of a very high cliff. Now, these are not make-up dreams. They're, these are actual dreams of an individual. I found myself standing at the edge of a very high cliff. I knew with certainty that I had a decision to make. Either step off the cliff or turn around and walk back to safety. I decided to step off. And instead of falling straight down, I began to glide gently downward. I landed in the driver's seat of a blue and white convertible that was moving at a high rate of speed. That's the dream. That's the dream. That's all the dream it is. Okay. Now, quickly. Give me a title. If you if this was a short story, okay, or a short dream, and it is, what would you give it a name? What would you title that dream? The Cliff in the Car. Okay, <laughs> Cliff in a Car. What else? <laughs> I like that. Take a plunge. Who else? I said endangerment. Endangerment. All right. Um, leap of faith. I love that. Yeah. Leap of faith. Yeah. All right. Okay. A lot of times we'll talk about this here in a little bit. Many times, uh, one of the first things we do when we're interpreting our dreams, I try to give it a title right off the bat, the first thing. And many times you'll find the interpretation is in the title. And many times you'll find Larry puts the title and then Donna goes and interprets the dream. The title has to be erased. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 he got the dream wrong. I did, and I did that <laughs> two, two days ago or something. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> What would the cliff edge be? The cliff edge. Obstacle. No, I mean, is that going to be a focus? Is that a sub-focus? Is it the detail? What? 
So the here, so we have the cliff edge. So I found my standing self standing at the edge of a very high cliff. Okay. So is that a would that be a detail? The focus is who's the trim is about. Yeah. So think out of that list there, who who would be the focus? Right, let's do that. Who there? is the focus? Person. The dreamer. The dreamer. Yeah. Okay, the so, dream. so the dreamer is the focus. Mm -hmm. So the dream, th this dream is about the dreamer. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's not observing. He's actually a part of it. So what? What would the cliff edge be? The sub I think you're right. It's a sub focus. It's one of the important details that if you didn't have this detail, you wouldn't. You'd miss the meaning of the dream. Yeah. Figure it that way. A subfocus is something that, okay, if I don't get this in there, I'm going to leave out the whole thing about the dreamer jumping. Yes. All right. What about that convertible car? It's open. I mean, it's, it, it is. It's a convertible, but it, is, that a, is that a detail or is that a subfocus? Subfocus. It's important, isn't it? It's important to the understanding of the dream, but it's, but it's not about the car. It's just there to support. Then we have the issue of it being uh, the car being white and blue. Is that a focus or is that a detail? Detail. detail. Okay. What about gliding? Do you remember when he stepped off the cliff, he began to glide? Is that a sub? Is that a sub focus or is that a detail? I think it'd be both. It could be. It could be both. I think Michael told us when we were when we were learning. He said, "You've got one focus. That's who the dream is about. Sub focuses. Don't get too many of them, or your mind gets distracted in too many directions. Try to keep your sub focuses at about two. Two to three. Two to three. Two to three important elements will tell you the meaning of the dream. Yeah. And then the rest are feeler and details. All right." Um, so we hit the rest of the, about the car, okay, the car being blue and white, that's a detail, right? The issue of gliding, uh, that could be a sub-focus or a detail. I'd probably lean more in the direction of a detail. Uh, the issue of the car already moving. It's a detail. It's a, yeah, yeah, still a detail. Um, and the speed, uh, it's talking about if the car was moving at a high rate of speed. That's kind of like the blue and white issue. It's still talking about a detail. Okay, if we move that detail out, okay, we're to do it's still not gonna mess with the interpretation. Okay. Now the driver's seat. Okay. That's very important. That's our sub focus. Okay. That was real important because being in the driver's seat means that you're in control. There you go. So yeah. You're already catching on. If if you're not in the driver's seat, then someone else is controlling what you're gonna be doing. Yeah. All right, next uh, uh, next page. We need to ascertain what the context of the dream is. The context of the dream determines whether a symbol is positive or negative. And you can use that example right there in that cliff. Jumping off a cliff can be hazardous. It's dangerous. But in the dream, he didn't get hurt. So it was positive. It was a leap of faith. Did yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Depends on how you feel. How did they feel in the dream? Mm -hmm. And how did it affect them? It caused no harm, so it wasn't dangerous. It was just a leap of faith. We've got to determine the attitude and the agendas of those in the dream. You know, what were the emotions of people in the dream? You know, we, we're going to talk about symbols. We talk about colors and things like that. But we have got to under, try to keep in mind what emotions are present. Okay, I find that the emotions that you're feeling in the dream, they're usually accurate. Okay, and we need to pay attention to the emotions of the people in the dream. They're just as important as what you see. Okay, recognize what God is presently dealing with in our own life. And we need to note that the goals of uh, God has given us. Okay, if God has spoken to you about your uh, family, spoken to you about a ministry, yeah, okay, this is what the dream, we need to keep that in mind when we're trying to uh, figure these dreams out. Uh, we need to, uh, another important is the importance of color. Color helps determine the context of the dream. 
okay? It will help. Example, here we are, um, the, uh, the blue, go back to the blue car, car, okay? And I'm jumping guns here a little bit. Blue is symbolic of, um, it was blue and white. It's blue and white, but I'm going to do, do it both positive and negative. Okay, so there's a positive interpretation and there's a negative interpretation on all symbols. Okay, the positive interpretation of blue is revelation. Okay, it's, it's spirit. So in, in, in its core, it's, it's symbolic of spirit. It's spirit and it's a revelation. That, that is um, the, uh, that's the core part of it. What would be the negative? Still spirit. No, no, I'm talking about the blue. Oh, the negative of the uh, spirit. There's a good spirit and there's a bad spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's when you're positive, blue, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you decide? What? Yeah. Down, spirit depression. of depression. Yeah. Spirit of sadness. Okay. Now this dream was a positive dream, right? It was positive from the very beginning, mm -hmm. right? He jumped off the cliff and all he does is glide way down. Everything's perfect. You've got different, you've got threatening conditions, you've got a speeding car, you've got the cliff itself, but it's all positive. So the pause, so we need, when we're looking at the color, I'm going to look for the positive interpretation of it also, because that's talking about the context. Okay? So it's the spirit of revelation. The white was the spirit of righteousness, purity. Mm -hmm. Dreams in color are from God. Okay? Black and white or muted color dreams are from the enemy. Okay. Be, unless you don't know if you dream in color or black and white. Yeah. If you don't think about that in your dream, if you have a dream and you say, well, I don't even know if I dream that in color or I dream that black and white, then it don't matter. Yeah. See what I'm saying? If something is very upsetting to you and it sticks out in your mind, that something was in color, then it's important. Or that there was no color and you saw that it was black and white and, and that bothered you in the dream, then that's important. But if it's not something that you even remember, then it's probably not relevant. It has no well, effect on black, mean, black mm -hmm. can, can it. Black means death. Black can be. And that's why this says that black and white or muted can be from the enemy. So, and then, here's the key, so what Donna said can be from the enemy. What would be the positive of black? It's just hidden. Hidden. Think about Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. When it goes it's to being cloaked, cloaked, right? You can't see it. It's, it's hidden. It's You're hidden. not going to see it. Yeah. So black in the positive, even though black can have a positive, can mean that it's unrevealed and it's hidden and you're not going to know it right now. Yes. So it can be that God is wanting you to See something, but it's hidden from you. Yes. Exactly. It's yep. not revealed right now. Yep. We've got to determine the tone of the dream. Did the dream, did it produce fear? Did it produce hopelessness? Did it uh, create uneasiness or peace? Or was there just a lack of those elements that it produced? What about anticipation? Okay. I've had a dream before where I you know, was robbing a bank. But I felt real good about it in the dream. <laughs> yeah. And I, when, I, when the dream was over with me, and I, I knew that this is not a bad dream. I, yes, that the act of robbing the bank is not a good thing, but I felt so good about it. And, and so it, I knew that it was. I had to start looking for the positive of that. Okay. What, what was the atmosphere of the dream? Was it harsh? Was it ominous? Was it lighthearted? Or was it just kind of neutral? Okay. We've got to have patience um, and dream interpretation. We'll not be able to interpret every dream we have or that another person brings to us. We, must, we may have to hold uh, some of our own dreams for years before God grants the, the meaning. And I've seen that. God will give us a dream years earlier so that we can learn how far we have to, uh, to be, we've progressed. He'll do it to reveal how he has been at work in our lives. Think about it, go back to Joseph's dream, okay? Here he is, he's got the dream of the, of the bales of wheat and the brothers bowing down to him, right? And here we go, another 16 years minimum before that manifest. 
But if, but if God gave him that dream, and he knows this is what God is telling me, this is what God is doing in my life, then that is what's going to prevail. I'm not going to stay in this dungeon. Yes, this is this is the interim. God, what God is in heaven for me will prevail. And that's why God gives us those type of dreams. May it be years down the road, might be years right down the road, but that's what God told me. And God doesn't lie. God gives a promise. He keeps the promise. So I don't care what I'm going through right now. I know I had that dream. I know I have an understanding of that dream. I feel confident about that. So I'm relying on my relationship with God. I'm relying on what God has shown me. I don't care what goes on right now. He's already shown me what the outcome is. Okay. Um, we remember aggressive waiting and active feeding. Avoid waiting for some spiritual moment of inspiration. Don't resign ourselves to passive waiting. Active waiting, what is that? When to meditate on that dream. That's active. Do you, you may not have the understanding of it. Well, dwell upon it. Okay. What's that next? That's a reading scripture. Yeah, it's, it's reading scripture. It's prayer. It's it's to it's all done to promote communication with God. Active uh, waiting is going to involve service and fellowship as well. Active feeding is going to be reading God's word, reading the parables, reading God's parables. Is an excellent way to understand dreams. Excellent way to understand symbolism. Active feeding is going to be prayer, any type, and worship. Also, talking to a trusted advisor. We need to set a time up and place, create a protective environment where we communicate with the commune with the spirit. And we've got to release ourselves from personal limitations. God can use us beyond our perceived limits. Okay, if we go back to our dream that we just did here, we got the guy uh, jumping off the cliff. He knew he had a decision to make. Okay, the li what was his limits? The limits was that cliff. The limit was taking a, making a decision to do something. It could be financial. It could be a career change, and and you just don't know about these things. But if God's telling you, there's where you, you take that leap of faith. That was the limit. Okay. We got to keep the soul in submission to the spirit. Don't allow frustration to set in and rob you of our, of your peace. What is the soul? Our soul is all about emotions, okay? And it'll drive us and try to prevent us from enjoying God's presence and enjoying God's um, desires for our life. And we got to recognize that. What's going on here? Is your soul driving you, or is your spirit driving you? And our soul man always wants to take authority. He's going to mess you up. We got to find the theme or the plot of the dream. Write down the main facts. If we go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. I understood the meaning, and I, Daniel, had a dream, and I wrote down the main facts. This assures that we will not forget the dream. It allows you to return to the dream at a later date when you may have a new perspective on it. It's a way of honoring what God has given us. Writing down your dream is honoring what God, I like to look at it this way. If I was having a meeting with Obama or any, I don't care who it is, okay? If, if, it's, if, I, if it's somebody of high significance, don't think I'm not going to record that, uh, that encounter. I'm going to dwell upon it. I, uh, regardless of what we think of, quote, that leader. Okay, I am going to take, I'm going to record it. I want to dwell on it. I'm going to take a picture of it. Okay, and we need to do the same things when it comes to dreams that we know are from God. Okay, so when we record them, when we journal them, when we capture that, okay, all, what does that do? It tells God, God, I, I am honoring your voice. I am honoring what you've spoken to me. What you just uh, shared with me is of enormous importance. Your presence is of importance to me. He's going to give you more. He's going to give you understanding. So many times, though, we'll journal the dream, and, and, and perhaps and that's the last thing we do with it. Do we go back and meditate upon it? It's amazing sometimes. Don, I, Lord, I've got, we'll talk about journaling here in a little bit, but 
thousands of dreams. I'm talking about just ours. Okay, and we'll go back and dwell on the dreams that we had three years ago. Dreams that we had six months ago. And it's amazing what God was again brings more revelation. We thought we had revelation then, and it was enough. But as we go back and meditate, he tell you, well, we see even more things than what he was talking about. Um, consider the, the uh, natural order. The dreamly, dream will likely progress in that manner. What questions linger about the dream? What are the most arresting images in the dream? Do we have an immediate sense of the, of the dream? Do we have an immediate sense of the meaning of the dream? And what are our strongest associations? You know, feelings, esteem, disdain toward the individuals in the dream. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we we have uh, you know there's you know I may Donna may have a dream of a person and uh, she knows that that person's the enemy in her dream. Now, is the person in the in the dream actually a, um, a demonic entity? No, they they just got poor values and they attack. And she knows that the, that they, that person usually represents the enemy coming against her, or coming against us. So what is she doing? She's going back, and, and she is she's looking at. Did you have a disdain for that person? Okay. What was your feelings for that person in the dream? Yeah. Or warning. It, it, it's just or you you sense things about. And, and you have to relate that to things that are in your real life. Yeah. Um, so many. I, I have one girl that's that's just so precious to me, and she's angels in my dreams. Yeah. When God's telling me that there's an angel there to help me, He always puts this sweet, sweet girl in my dream. Yeah. Is she like your little protector? I don't even see her anymore. It's just oh, she. No, it was just somebody that I knew that was just. I see her as being so sweet. So you have to look at what does that or person stand out? Yeah, what does that person stand out to you? Right. She would like when I dream about my dad. To protect her, uh, like when I dream about my dad. Yeah. Your dad is an authority over right. you, and it's usually God. Usually when we dream about our dads, we're dreaming about God. Usually. Yeah. Usually. And my mom, I dream about her a lot. Your mom can be the church because she's your source of life. I was born into the church, the family of God, through the church, right? right. So my mom can represent my church. And my we are the body of Christ. We are the church. And so God will talk to me about the church by using my mom. But if if there's if it doesn't fit like that and it doesn't seem like that's what he's talking about. Do you know what else your mom represents? Your ability to love and nurture someone else. So it can be simply him talking to me about the way that I love or that I can reach out to other people about my heart. Yeah. My mom is my heart. How many of us would say that? Your mom's your heart. Mom. Yeah. The, uh, Donna's talking about, we've got to pay attention. The, the people in the dream, do they symbolize something to us? You know, um, yeah, you, you might. I mean, I've had dreams of John Paul Jackson before. There may be people like Bob Jones, um, and, and those type of people. If they're in your dream, and I've, I've never personally, I've never met John Paul Jackson, but <laughs> but I've had him in my dreams a couple of times. Mm -hmm. He's the one that created these. right. Mm -hmm. uh, they're and they're prophets, okay. And, and so it's, it's, it's so God has given just <laughs> using them to illustrate the prophetic or a prophetic um, announcement in our dream. Okay, I've dreamed uh, sometimes of uh, Clint Eastwood. Okay, he's an actor, right? But he, he, I've never met Clint Eastwood, but uh, he's been in my dreams quite a bit. And when he is, it usually means he and he tells me it's time to it's time get up, let's go. It's time to fight. You know, he you know uh, Clint was always about in his in the, his movies is he's one of going against the odds. Right, spiritual war. spiritual war, and it's about for me. So that's so you dream about Clint Eastwood. Me dreams may, could be two different things. For me, it's always been spiritual warfare. I don't like seeing him in, in dreams anymore because I know he's gonna say it's time, get up, let's go. And okay, it's time to fight. 
And now, does that mean that I'm supposed to come against my neighbor or come against somebody that's attacking me? No. He's talking about getting in the prayer closet. He's talking about going to, to fasting and getting serious spiritually and fighting spiritually, not against uh, uh, somebody in the natural. And as all the, some of you know, those can be some rough fights. Um, what do we, we need uh, to remember most about the dream? Focus on that, okay? Were certain things in the dream exaggerated, some, uh, such as a physical item, like our ears or nose? I've seen it. It's kind of like in the character drawings. You know, if you go to the county fair and we, we sit down on the stool, right? And they'll draw your, and they always, it's sort of like if I look at Obama pictures in the newspaper today, what do they always do? They're always drawing with big ears, right? Now, does he have ears that big? No. Right, he doesn't. But what, so why would God do that in a dream? He's calling your attention to hearing. Okay, uh, our nose. Okay, nose. It could be greatly exaggerated and being in its length. Right now, what is that about? I mean, remember now we remember Pinocchio. Pinocchio right, it could be <clears throat> you you stretching the tr truth a little bit, or it so could long. it could be uh, just one of discernment. Yeah. Yeah. No, your nose represents discernment, being discerning. Uh, so when we see exaggerated things in a dream, it doesn't mean that, uh, that that's the way things actually are. It's just God bringing your attention. This is what I want you to focus on. Okay. Seeing uh, here you have one woman there and, or a man and the lips are just exaggerated. Right. Maybe it's exaggerated speech. Maybe it's exaggerated, uh, things are exaggerated that's coming out of that person's mouth that we need to focus on. Okay? Like that time I had the dream, the, the man with the white teeth. Yeah, exactly. It's exaggerated in the dream. Mm -hmm. We must understand that the dreams are like characters. They amplify certain aspects to get our attention. And these exaggerations is not meant to say that that's the way it actually is. And we learn to title the dream, okay? Very important part that is most, a lot of times overlooked. It's actually the first step in the interpretation. Some, again, sometimes that interpretation will flow from the title. And like Donna said, sometimes I've got that wrong and I've had to go back, usually with her direction. We got to learn to walk through the dream with the dreamer. When somebody's telling us our dream, seek to enter into the dream with them. See yourself walking through the dream as you hear it. You know, so many times, you know, I like to repeat a dream. Somebody tells me a dream, and, and I know sometimes the dreamers get aggravated. Well, I just told you that. Right? Well, here I am, I'm repeating it almost as word for word. And I'm not, one, I'm trying to, I'm looking for accuracy. Did, one, did I hear what I thought I heard you say? Sometimes we don't. Sometimes uh, we're ahead of the dreamer or we're behind the dreamer and we missed issues, right? So I like to repeat it back, but it also gives me an opportunity. Can I feel the same thing they're feeling? It helps with the interpretation process. Um, we got to release goals for interpretation and judgment. One way to miss the interpretation is to set goals on how the process will evolve or express itself. If you're unable to interpret a dream, set it on the shelf for a while and allow it to incubate. There's nothing wrong with not having an answer to the dream. If you don't have the interpretation, I'm talking about for yourself or others, fine, leave it alone. God may not want you to have it right now. Okay? Um, so many times I've heard, you know, I'll share a dream with Donna and or she's sharing hers or whatever, and we're both stuck on something. And here she is, she'll walk from down upstairs going down the bathroom and God will give the interpretation to her right there. I've seen her sit in the bathtub, soaking, and uh, God's giving her the interpretation there. Okay, goes back to putting it on the shelf, goes back to uh, meditating on it. Um, often what our soul tells us about a dream is dreadful. What the Spirit tells us is beautiful. Even others may see beauty in the very thing, the very thing our soul abhors. We've got to be careful about that. In the creative expression of dreams, our soul and our spirit are intertwined. They operate in an endless cycle, but the spirit must rule. Okay, and there's where we got to be cautious. Inside the dream, we've got two things that are going on. 
Yes, God's giving you a dream. Okay, but also your soul is involved in there too. Okay, and, and you, we got to be okay. I'm, what part of this is God? What part of it is just me? That takes a lot of experience, and it takes time to discern. Okay, that's just. And it may be an issue of fear. A lot of times, it's going to. Uh, remember what's what's the soul about? Soul's all about emotions. I like it. I like it a lot. And all I want is what I like. Or it's all about fear. And so, so when you when our emotions will enter into a dream and try to mess up what God has given us. Another thing is your soul would like to interpret the dream. We get involved with our likes and our dislikes, and we got to be so careful about that. We get involved in our soul will take over, well, you don't even like this person. And so it'll drive the interpretation in a certain way. Or you may have disdain or for you know, a situation in somebody's life. Well, I, you know, I know they need to straighten up this part of life. Well, you know that's what God's talking about, is that part of their life that they don't have on the cross yet. Let me help you put it on the cross. Well, your soul just helped in doing all that and got it all wrong. When we're supposed to let the Spirit, our whole, the Spirit give us understanding. Okay? Um, I want to end that right there.